avoid the souls and the So, OG. We are going to do slangs today. Um, and I've got a load of slangs to talk to. I posted on my Instagram this week to get some slangs from you guys and you posted me loads. So I've gone through a few of them and I've picked out around 10 because if I chose all of them, then the video would go on forever. Um, so I had to slim it down to ones that I thought were interesting, common, um, and I've also got some British slangs as well, which I'm gonna tell you guys about Today is a holiday in Brazil, so when it's a holiday, we have a beer. Got a Brahma today, so I don't want no complaints about Brahma because I thought it was a neutral beer. Firsty. So let's start. So the first one I chose was Caraca or Caramba, a Rio slang, apparently. Um, I would like to say though, if I do tell any false facts about these slangs, then just put in the comments and let me know. So, caraca caramba. It's surprise from something. Caraca que lugar increíble. It's like, wow, what an amazing place. Um, caraca caramba, 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 caraca. Yeah, I've heard this before a few times. I don't know if I'll say it myself. Maybe. Maybe if I get a bit more comfortable with the language, I might say it myself. But personally, well, not right now, I'm not really using slangs. <laughs> I'm just trying to focus on the simple language. Next one we have Zuado. Zuado. So I have two spellings up on the screen. I don't know which is the correct one, um, but it's pronounced Zuado. So either one looks about right. So apparently it means feeling nauseous, tired or drunk. Okay, so something that I would probably use because, you know, I can imagine myself using this at a party. But I've just had too much to drink. Estoy muito zoado. So the example here, estoy muito zoado. Estoy muito, estoy muito zoado. Brasil ir para casa. I need to go home. I've had too much to drink. I don't feel good. <laughs> I like this one. It's definitely something that I can see myself using. Zoado. Next one we have is a cabra safado. A guy who is naughty or lazy. That's not me stating that now. I'm not a cabra safado. So in a sentence, Kim e esta cabra safado falando comina irma. Who's this guy talking to my sister? Like, who is this, this thing, not dangerous, but like, who's this bad guy? Who's this guy? Who is this guy talking to my sister? You know, that kind of thing, like a cabra, safado. Don't go near him. Next one is, why? U-A-I, why? Sounds just like why in English. So for example, você não vai na festa? Why? You're not coming to the party? What? It's like saying like, what do you mean? It's like a shock. Why? I like it. I can see myself using this one. Um, I have a little fun fact on this on this slang as well. Whether it's true or not, I do not know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me in the comments if you do know the actual, actual origins of this slang. There is some debate about the word, um, where it came from. Some theories say that it's an acronym of Union dos Astutos da Inconfidencia. Probably didn't pronounce that correct. That apparently was a separatist movement from the state in 1789 to become independence of Brazil. So apparently it was a time when Minas Gerais wanted to become independent of Brazil back in 1789, it's a long time ago. And there was a movement and Y is an acronym of the name of that movement and the movement name is Union dos Estudos da Inconfidencia. So it's U. A I. Another one is it, it, the the slang U A Y Y came from when British people were working in Brazil building train tracks, and obviously being British, we use the word Y. Why are you doing that to the train track? Why are you building the train track like that? Maybe, maybe, and Brazilians picked it up. Brazilians picked up the British word Y, and it became a slang in Minas Gerais. 
whether it's true or not, I don't know. But it's a fun fact for you. Next, we have Vé. Um, apparently, this is popular in Brasilia. Used as like a kind of a like a way to say dude. Like uh, let's, let's see examples. Vé, o show ontem foi muito bom. It's like dude, the show was so good tonight. It comes from the word velo, which means old. Next one. De ruim. De. De ruim. De ruim. A Rio de Janeiro slang. De ruim. Now vai da para a gente ser hoje. It's like bad news. We won't be going out today. Maybe the weather was bad or something. De ruim. Now vai da para a gente ser hoje. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Let me know. Let me know in the comments if if this is common for you. If you use it. Never sip a beer. Next one we have K Massa. K Massa, nos vencemos Omega Sena. K Massa is like wow. Oh no, maybe not like that, but like wow, we won the lottery. K Massa, nos vencemos Omega Sena. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. K Massa, K Massa. Apparently, I heard this was like used in the north quite a lot. This one I like, this one I could definitely use. It's something that I probably use in the English language quite a lot. It's EIE, what's up? EIE, mi amigo. Sup, my friend. So yeah, in England, we'd probably say something like this, like, what's up, what's going on? It's not so formal, like, hey, how are you? It's more like, hey man, what's up, you know? Hey, what's happening? We say what's happening, I say what's happening, I say what's happening, it's like, what's going on? So yeah, I, I like EIE, I, I, I would use this one. I'm definitely gonna, gonna start using this one. So this one, Shene Lagam, Shene Lagam, Shene Lagam, when something is bad, Que shena lagam, esa festa. Means like, ah no, this party is bad, like we need to leave. Shena lagam, shena lagam, shena lagam, shena lagam, shena lagam, shena lagam. I don't know how to say that correctly, um, so anyone that can let me know how to say that correctly, please do. Okay, so the next one, hole. Vamos da un hole, vamos pasea. Let's go outside. Let's go, let's go, let's go do something, let's go outside and see things. I'm definitely going to use this one as well. This is something that I like to do, you know, go outside. I want to, I don't want to stay inside, I want to go. I want to vamos da un hole. That's exactly what I want to do. Especially in this quarantine situation when I've been at home all the time. I'm ready to vamos da un hole. Ready to vamos da un hole. I'm ready to hole. I'm ready to hole. No, I'm done with the quarantine. Next one we have is Shay. I know this one's from the south. Because um, when I used to live in the Falkland Islands, they used to say Shay as well. It's like mates, you know, how's it going, Shay? And this came from the Gauchos in the Falkland Islands when you had Gauchos coming from Uruguay and Chile, and they used to say Shay as well. Um, so perhaps that's an influence on the cipher of Brazil, um, and, and it's used in the cipher of Brazil. Strangely, people from the Falkland Islands say it as well. Okay, this one's a bit of a weird one. I picked it up at the last minute. Pão duro, when someone is grumpy, boring, a Scrooge. Esse cara é um pão duro. I have no idea what that means. I didn't translate. <laughs> I didn't translate this one. Esse cara é um pão duro. I just know it means you're maybe this guy is being a grumpy Scrooge. Scrooge is someone who doesn't enjoy events, doesn't enjoy parties. Usually you call someone who doesn't enjoy Christmas, but we also call this for like someone that like spoils the fun. So perhaps it means the same thing in Brazilian slang. I just found it an interesting one. Okay, next one we have, it's the last one. It's Oshi or Oshinti, 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 Oshi. It's difficult to put in a sentence this one, but perhaps it's like a reaction to something. It's something when something hits the floor and makes a, a loud noise. It's Oshi, like what was that? So yeah, there's some, some interesting slangs there and like, like I said when I posted on Instagram I had so many, so many re responses with so many different slangs. Brazil's a huge country as well, so you've got loads of different dialects and, and slangs that you're going to use from south to north. And that also now brings me on to English slangs. And England's a small country, but if you didn't know already, we have like loads of different dialects and slangs from the north to Scotland, from the west in Bristol where I'm from, 
to London. We have words that they say in London and 120 miles away in Bristol, words that we say that people from London wouldn't understand. Um, and same from north to south, we have completely different words. I'm going to talk about some of these words now, some of these slangs. I've chosen ones that are common, um, so they're not going to be like too regional. They're going to be like general slangs that come across the whole of England. So if you are ever in England, you could use these words and people are going to understand them across the whole of the country. Let's start with cheers. Simple expression, we use this for like anything from saying thank you if I'm in a shop and I buy something and I say cheers. Um, or when we're at a, having a drink together and we, we chink glasses like you do, I don't know you say in Brazil, chin chin. Cheers. Drink your drink. But most commonly used as a way of saying thank you. So just like, oh cheers, thank you. <sighs> Cheesed off cheesed off like the actual food cheese um i'm cheesed off today it means like i'm a noise i'm i'm annoyed today i'm cheesed off with the weather the weather's been so bad lately i'm just cheesed off next one grim so grim means like i think it comes from the word grime and grime's like something that you get with like uh, dirty grime's dirt and grim is like uh, uh, comes from the word grime so it's Maybe you get a, a, some food, like a pizza, and it looks terrible. You go, that pizza looks really grim. That pizza looks grim. Or the weather, again, the weather can be grim. It's cloudy, it's raining. The weather's pretty grim today. I'm not going to go out. Chinwag. Chinwag. So a chinwag is... It's like when maybe your mum meets her sister or her brother um, or her friend and they have a good like a good chat a chin wag it's, you know the chin and it's wagging it's talking it's moving a lot it's chin wagging um <laughs> which also brings me on to the slang we have waffling waffling is more like ah, this guy's been waffling on all day so it's like he's just been talking nonsense he's been talking stuff that doesn't really make sense he's not talking about anything important um, it's just been waffling. You can also say this about like your 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 prime minister or your president. If you don't like him, and you think he's just talking, talking a lot of shit. You just say, yeah, he's waffling on again. He is waffling on again. He's a bloke, lad. Get used to this one because this is very specific to England as well. Um, a geezer or a lad. A geezer or a lad. How can I explain it? A geezer or a lad is like someone who likes football, likes to drink a lot of beer, like me. Maybe I'm a geezer or a lad. Okay, now it's not like me, it's more like someone who's like a bit more obnoxious, a bit more like, they like to hang around in groups of boys, they go out to the pub, they make a lot of noise, they're obnoxious, they're kind of, they like to get drunk and a bit careless, they're a bit of a lad, they're a bit of a geezer. And we also have bloke, but bloke is like, Bloke is just for like a man, like, what's that bloke doing over there? Or there's some bloke walking over there. Or some bloke came into work today talking about this, waffling on. Some bloke came into work today and he's waffling on. Bloke just means man. Geezer lad is more specific to a type of guy. The type of guy we have in England who's like, yeah, like a, he likes to go out and have a beer with the boys, you know, with the lads. Knackered. This is a good one. It's, we use it all the time means like I'm tired, I feel so knackered today, just want to go home, I'm absolutely knackered after today, or I'm knackered from work today, it's very like, um, it's, everyone uses this, I'm knackered, um, also brings me on to Cockney rhyming slang, which is a whole nother episode, I'm not from London, so I don't really feel like I have the right to talk about it, but I can certainly discuss it, um, we would say cream crackered, I'm absolutely cream crackered, in London they have slangs which are phrases that rhyme with other words so apple in pears is stairs and cream crackered is knackered so I'm absolutely cream crackered if you say that most people in England are gonna know exactly what you're talking about skin so I'm absolutely skin this means you haven't got any money it doesn't mean like forever it's not like you you are struggling financially forever it's more kind of like it's the end of the month payday's in three days a 
and right now you don't have any money, you're skint. So if your friends ask you to come out for a drink, come out for a beer, let's go to the pub, you might reply, I can't, I've got to stay home tonight, I'm absolutely skint. Another one we have is on the pool. So on the pool, this is a funny one. This is like when a group of guys or girls go on a night out and they might be like a group of single guys or a group of single girls or most of them are single or whatever. It might be just two friends, but they might say we're going out on a pool. It means they're going to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend or just someone to sleep with. Like if you dressed up and you, you made yourself look really nice, really presentable, and you're going out on a Friday night, you're going out on the pool, you're looking for someone to go home with basically and not your friend, boyfriend or girlfriend, someone to sleep with. In it. Okay, so in it, you're going to hear this a lot in like inf informal English. It's the shortened version of isn't it. So it's like, you like football, innit? It's just a way of saying isn't it. It's like, it's a bit cold today, innit? A bit cold today, innit? You know, it's, it's hot today, innit? It's used as a short version of isn't it? And it doesn't sound like English at all, but it's used a lot. So take note. Okay, dodgy. Dodgy is okay. Dodgy is like when something's a bit like um, suspicious. Like maybe you you walk into a neighbourhood where you might be robbed. You're gonna say that neighbourhood's a bit dodgy. I won't go to that neighbourhood. Or a guy's walking around. He's acting a bit suspicious. Call him dodgy. That guy over there. That bloke's a bit dodgy. That bloke looks a bit dodgy. It's a good example. That's my English slangs. There's a lot of them. Take note of them though, because a lot of them are used with English people all across the regions. I do have a couple regional slangs though, since I'm from Bristol, I thought it was only right that I do a couple of sort of phrases and slangs from my region. So one that we say, a, a phrase that we say for getting off the bus, when we're on a bus, um, this is not used anywhere in, else in the country. I say cheers drive, it just means cheers driver. Um, it's very common in Bristol, we're friendly people, we like to thank the bus driver when we get off the bus. In London you don't thank the bus driver, they're a bit more rude, you get on the bus, you pay, and you sit down and when you get off you just get off, you don't speak to the driver. In, in Bristol we're a bit more friendly. And no one is arc it in, it's like, arc it in is like, it's when someone's talking a lot, you know, like when someone's might be talking about themselves in a good way, like, ah, oh, I'm going out tonight, I'm, I'm on the pool tonight, I'm feeling good, and you'd be like, oh, Kim, it's, it's like a bit confident, you know? It's very common used in Bristol, and like I said, this phrase is, is if you if I said this in London, people are going like, what did you say? Like, I understand you. Or if I say it in, in, in Manchester, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna have a clue what I'm talking about. So guys, that is it for today. That is my episode on slangs. Um, please do correct me if I did said any Brazilian slangs wrong. Um, just put it in the comments and let me know if, if the meanings were correct or wrong. Um, let me know your favourite slang. And yeah, until next time, I've got an episode. My next episode is going to be it's going to be a story. It's going to be a story about a part of my life, which will be five years from this month um, it was when I lived in the Falkland Islands and I'm gonna tell a little story about it and how it came about and how my life changed within like two weeks and completely just went from living in one place to another extreme place um, so that's gonna be my next episode so make sure you watch and keep subscribing keep liking follow me on Instagram if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video